what a nasty, uh, nasty position. <laughs> it's not going to get worse than that. Good game. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Building Repertoires Using Chessable. In this series, I take brand new openings that I've never played before, and I'm learning them for the first time ever using Chessable courses specific to each one. So I'm working through the courses, and after you see me play these openings in my Blitz games during the series, I'll cross-reference them with the Chessable course to make sure I'm playing the right way and making sure I'm learning and, and improving for next time. So I hope you guys really enjoy the series and I hope it gives you an insight into how to study and improve at chess. All right, D4, we haven't seen a lot of D4 guys, so, or even C4 for that matter. It's going to be an E4, E5 festival. Um, D4 is a move that we have definitely not covered, um, but we'll certainly be taking. And yeah, I, I don't think there's anything in particular that, um, that we've looked at here yet. Obviously, knight here can't be a bad move. But yeah, I'll be, I'll be very interested to look at this in a sec. Bishop here. I think we can just, I think we can just grab and go, um, because of Queen E two, we always have Queen E seven. Take that. Um, I think I am going to take with the Esha. It's kind of all the same. If I can, I feel like I'd like to keep the king in the middle. So let's try to do that and be a little bit greedy. Let's check the king. This is not really viable. King d3, we have another check. We're going to castle. I know this pawn is hanging, but there's nothing more valuable than just uh, bringing the rooks to the middle because now we force him to go back before he really wants to. The rooks are not connected, so that's a big victory for me. So this move has a lot of things wrong with it. Um, this one is obviously the most exciting. Taking here and playing bishop e4 is for sure going to win material if not the game but this one is particularly nasty because <laughs> how much you can do so knight g5 kind of gets him out of trouble let's say so i think i'm actually going to play h6 as long as i stop this and my bishop remains here we're good okay, knight here again all the squares are covered Knight b3, just insult to injury, I'm going to play this move because I want to make it clear that he has no squares for that, that knight. Yeah, g4, but again, he's not really, he's not doing anything there. Let's just play this. Knight here is going to get mated. We can run him out of moves here. He's basically going to be in some form of a stalemate. What a nasty, 
A nasty position. <laughs> it's not gonna get worse than that. Good game. Queen e7 is the main move, but there's just there's not really any move that's sufficient other than queen e3. Maybe there's a few other tries, but going back to d1 as he did is just unacceptable. Right? Because now you just lose uh Tempe against your pawn. Really quick development. This is yeah. They just lost the pawn very quickly. And now we're able to take with the D-pawn and bring more pieces into the game. All right, let's play D4. C5. So surprisingly, we've actually seen that move quite a bit. Um, it's not highly theoretical, but the point is we just play D5. I know it's not really a Jobava London, but you know, some moves like C5 and E5, you need to handle differently. So. We'll be playing uh, e4. He decides to play b5 straight away. Um, okay, I will take it. This guy's crazy. Queen a5. He might be thinking of a tactic there, but I can bring my knight back to c3. Hmm? Now, don't, don't think that this is just done and dusted, right? Not at all. Uh, the, the opening itself, the Benko, is still, um, still a tricky one. So we have work to do here. C4. So the move E4 is actually not, not possible because of, the, um, because of our situation here. The move Queen D4 stands out to me. Bishop D2, Knight takes D5. Um, honestly, probably still really, really good. And I think the reason that, uh, I'm interested maybe in a position like that is feels like a position that I don't think a, uh, Benko Gambit player wants to play. So yeah, he's going to take this pawn back and he's going to immediately win it. And yeah, we have lots of ideas to maybe just like protect the pawn or F3 for but I'm going to choose a higher energy option. My plan was bishop d2 takes and then e4. Maybe coaxing him to take, and then our bishop hits this pawn. This move, unfortunately, probably not very good. Now I'm threatening the c pawn, and e4 is a huge achievement in the center. C7, guarding the pawn. It is a very, uh, very reasonable move. Let's just uh, make, a, make a normal developing move for now. Okay. Kind of like queen e2 as an idea, just to hit that pawn, and eventually I think we are going to win it. I know it's a funny looking move, but I don't know, the pawn's weird to defend. You kind of have to like bishop a6, but it's not really where you want to put your pieces. And yeah, we're just going to go ahead and take that pawn. We're up a lot of uh, material here. Two pawns for basically no compensation. And it's hard for him to refuse a queen trade because my next move is queen b5 like this, queen c8. Doesn't really do anything either. We could already go with this, but I think at this point I can almost choose maybe something even more annoying. Threaten knight c7. Instead of the expected bishop to b5, let's threaten this. That's going to force knight a6, and that's back to stuff that we're familiar with. That arrangement for my opponent is not one he should be happy with. Ooh, and this, bishop a5. It's getting into some serious trouble already. And, you know, after this, knight c7 to win the rook, you might think like, oh, we're time to, time to counterattack. Knight takes here. This would result in a pretty cool checkmate. 
GG. Okay, we do get a move. D5. Knight C3, C6. Bishop F4. And with these three pawns uh, like this, you're definitely going to see Bishop to F5 as the next move. It's the only thing that really makes sense. Knight F6. F3. G4. And H4. We've seen this before, right? Now with this one, remember, we don't want to play h5. It's, it's very important to remember that, actually. Bishop d6, takes, takes, knight d7. I think we want a castle to defend our rook. Now we can push with this g5 move. That's what we've been building up for. And I'm pretty sure that the main idea of all this stuff is to play the move g6. Um, yeah, because now we get to take this pawn and queen e7, there's knight c7, and the whole game kind of uh, comes apart. Oh, he doesn't even see the backwards knight move, so <laughs> he doesn't even have that going for him. But don't, uh, don't knock the opponent here because queen to b4 is the next move. So um, don't underestimate what he's threatening here. e4 to get out of this, or rook e1 or something, queen b4 threatens mate. The only way to stop mate is b3, but then there's queen a4. So queen b4 is no joke of a move, which means we're going to have to just, you know, take a moment here and be slightly accurate and either play king, e, uh, king b1 for b3, or Rook here for knight d1 in order to cover both. So I think this is a little bit safer. What about a3? Just kind of gave me, uh, I was a little concerned with a3. Um, you know, spooky sacrifices. But there are many ways to achieve uh, basically what we want. So let's go here. Absolutely nothing wrong with that move. Man, funny, funny guy. Remember when he didn't take my knight here? Now it's like, you know, <laughs> this is like the Undertaker or something. WWE is like back from the dead in the corner to, <laughs> to take you. Queen b3, huge blunder. Let's not make that mistake. I think at this point, um, we uh, chase this knight around and we can bring our knight into the game and he can't trade us. So I think now. Now we're finally able to just push forward. This move is kind of irrelevant. And once we open things up, hey, I have an extra rook in case you forgot, buddy. Always want to open things. E6 is definitely the way to go, but I'm going to take because, hey, I, I just need to open things up. More open lines, the better. GG. So I think mean, this was I think this was more or less straight out of the course. So let's let's once again uh, take a look. So one thing for sure is that when our opponents play this, we play f3. So I guess after f3, they could play c6. So after c6, we should play f3. Seems weird because we already have the bishop committed. Go here, and then here we still play f3. So c6, this is the exact move order. c6, bishop f4. This order is quite rare, important to know how to respond. The good thing about the London is that the same ideas repeat themselves. Um, so we go f3. There are certain positions where I recommend e3 instead of f3. The black has played c6, which is not the best use of tempo. So it's crucial to play f3 and continue with rapid development. So f3 threatens e4. So the only thing that black really considers playing is knight f6 here. Hey, it's our first d4 game. It's our first one. 
We gotta celebrate. Oh, this guy's pre-moving here with knight, uh, knight f3. I'm not sure if this move is actually covered or not. Um, I can't really remember. I'm gonna play for d5. We're basically playing like a reverse French here. This should be a real big achievement for me. This uh, capture is not very bothersome. Uh, this is the move we wanted to see. Now, again, we don't know if this works, but gotta do it. Gotta do it. Remember, rookie one is the only way to try to run away. But, but, there's always going to be, almost always going to be a forced mate sequence. One, two, three, four, and five. So, yes, queen here, bishop here. We'll probably just win immediately um, because the bishop will take away the e2 square even if you block with the knight and then queen h1 is simply mate but rookie one i think it's more instructive to to know this and you can pre-move the whole thing yeah so he's going to take here it's the best move for sure he's uh gonna be hard pressed to survive here i think Hey, buddy. Hey, mom. Just uh, trying to collect some wins in the morning here. See a lot of the usual crew, a lot of the students attending uh, regularly, like Lolly, Goblin, Ralph. Yeah, our openings have been working pretty well. And meanwhile, I've been collecting uh, chess.com subs for King of the Hill. So, oh. you know, all in a day's work. Oh, King of the Hill? Yes. 30 uh, subs for King of the Hill. I'm guessing you had more success with that than Spell Chess? Is that, is that uh, or the latest... Uh... Yes. Although... Oh, wait, King of the Hill today. Was no, no, your... King of the Hill was from when I played it last... I think it was a week ago or something. Oh, okay. Is there a Thursday arena you're playing in? Is today Thursday? Um, it was today. Okay. But it wasn't for streamers, so I don't oh. think there were prizes. Oh. Yes, sir. This guy's a survivor. He's a runner. He's a track star. We have to get more queens against him. So his king's escaping, but at what cost? <laughs> this is a funny, funny looking position. Okay. I don't think there's like anything too interesting to play here. Uh, I can't really uh, see anything too uh, too cool to do. Sadly, Maybe we can just clean up all those pieces, you know. Jack, Jack. Let's restrict the uh, king. Like, uh, I guess we kind of have to do this. Maybe this. Yeah, Queen B2 is the uh, 
the proper uh, proper conclusion to that game. GG. GG Colin. Yeah, so there's three knight f3s. Let's let's look at these. So I think we may have checked this. So e4. Knight g5, and we play c6 d5. Yeah, this is definitely definitely not a good not a good move. Okay, knight g1. Interesting. Very direct approach. Queen f5 with bishop d6 coming. And this is the last one, knight d2. So okay, we, we came... We came across the best move anyway, um, or the one in the course at least, c6. Mm -hmm. D5. So yeah, this is pretty much our exact game. And yeah, in, in our position, it was takes, takes, bishop, b5, check, and we played knight, c6. That was no problem. Um, and yeah, this, this looks pretty comfortable. All right, we're back to e4 here. And uh, 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 uh. It's a, it's a dirty Vienna player. Ah, uh, let's see what he's got in store for us. Knight takes e4. What's buddy got in store for us? Oh, knight takes e4. Wow. The same move as the other guy, with, which is just terrible. Okay. Uh, fascinating stuff. Now, e3 is a really bad move here because white can play d4. But I tell you, e3, he's probably blundering his bishop. However, we have to take every opportunity to put these uh, Vienna players in the dirt. So we're not going to miss a chance here. OK, bishop takes f7. Is this the way they uh, drew it up in the course? Is this it? Is this in the course? <laughs> OK. I'm playing this, this move gingerly. Like, I'm not really sure what I'm walking into here. Okay. Okay. Okay, a queen trade. Wow, he was happy to trade that queen. I'm not sure why, but he was really happy to do it. Expecting him to castle because it's a check, and I really want him to do it. Yeah, so now I'm setting up bishop c5. Um, here, here, knight here. I guess there's knight e6. So he kind of uh, stays alive there. It's not as good as you might think. Also, this uh, really trades a little too much for my liking. So uh, let's actually go here, completely ignore uh, what he's up to, and just focus on trading. Here, yeah, it's a great move. Um, nothing wrong with it, but. I'm going to focus on um, trading the pieces. OK, bishop here maybe has the intention of going bishop c3. I'm not really going to flinch on my idea. 
just for the moment. And again, more trades. And rook takes e4, it gives me the maximum. Basically, I, I get to trade every piece there. Yeah, so th this is what we want. Here, he's actually in a pin, so maybe I'm not even trading pieces. Maybe I could play to win it. But bishop f5, king over. Uh, I guess it's a little bit messy there. It should be fine. Bishop here, rook there, g5, can't take. Yeah, this is definitely the best move, so I suppose. I suppose we should play it. Here, here, knight check, knight takes f8. Yeah, rook here, and then I think we continue to harass the rook. King um, h1 takes, knight takes bishop, and probably the funniest way to lose the game is to play king h8 there. And knight h6, believe it or not, is actually checking. <laughs> rook here. Uh, we can win this anytime, so let's just play this. This is always hanging. Still pinned, nothing you can do. Let's keep walking up the board. Hmm. Good game, another Vienna player in the dirt. All right, let's go for d4 here. g6, so we have actually seen, I mean, there's it's nothing too special, but we're going to play e4 like this, and... We're just playing some really simple stuff against the Pirates. Um, okay, so knight here. I'm sure it gets talked about. We haven't really uh, discussed knight c6 yet. Let's just castle. And we're usually playing moves like this, this, rookie one. So I, mean, I imagine h3 is not, uh, not completely crazy here. a6, I'll probably play a4. So knight d7 has an idea to play this and then knight d4. Um, I feel that this is well-timed now. Again, could be, could be a good move. I feel like d5, though, is, um, is pretty nice here. We really don't need to take or push. We could just sit here in this position, you know? Here, here. Yeah, there's going to be some f5 in the position to deal with. I guess this is a little simpler. Yeah, this is a Pierce, exactly. Um, I'm sure knight c6 gets talked about, so I'm eager to look and see afterwards. Whoa, <laughs> that's aggro. That's aggro. Let's take. So when we see that, usually this plan is effective or at least only tried when, um, when the position is a little more closed. Because now, with the open position, I'm not sure that uh, you're actually ready to, to handle, handle this position. A5, knight needs to move, and 
you know, maybe we could do this. I'm not even convinced that's uh, the best procedure. Hmm. So there is this move, but then we can take there. Um, C6 looks normal, but then I was thinking A6. Just kind of like, I don't know, jostle the position a little bit. Using our A pawn. Yeah, it did cost you five, JCAS. <laughs> a bet's a bet, buddy. Thank you for the five. <laughs> Throw a check at him. Oh, did not expect that. Rook a6 is a pretty good move, so yeah, even though uh, we missed the opportunity to play uh, bishop h6, uh, I don't think we're too upset. Ugh. I don't think we're upset, that's for sure. I can't believe he didn't put his king in the corner. What's he thinking? He's taking a journey to the center of the board here for no good reason. GG. E4. Let's go e5, knight c6. And here we play the move knight f6. So better believe we're gonna be seeing a lot of knight g5, but he goes just d3. So now we can actually play our line, which I believe is h6 after c3, not g5 right away because of d4, but first d6. I think, I think. We are in our uh, variation here. G5 castles. Bishop G7. So the only line that we've looked at so far has been Bishop B3, and then our line was A5. Here, I almost want to take a page out of a different variation and maybe play A6. But the general idea is queen here, bishop here. I feel that we need to disrupt this bishop a little bit, though. In here, here. Okay, I guess we could do this. I was thinking of a5 as well. Um, a6 has a knight a5 idea. White should basically respond with one of these two moves, and he does. And then we'll play our queen e7. Didn't really know what to do here. I don't think we've seen exactly this before, so. Um, Go here, and I think it's queen takes and knight seven to cover this square. He's playing in a way that I believe is just very logical. On oh, let's castle, just makes a lot of sense, right? How can you be upset with the way white is played, right? Fundamentally. I don't like our position, to be honest with you. So this this will need a lot of like justification from the, the course <laughs> because it does not feel natural to me. Um, it's just, just kind of a yucky pawn structure. I don't really know why I'm supposed to like it. So here. I'm going to try to do a little uh, reroute here. Really intuitive play by White.
Pawn takes was interesting to maybe start playing on the C file. Um, bishops being hit. Which looks kind of bad. <laughs> Let's go here. Yeah, definitely don't think that was the right idea. Um, I'm certainly not doing well or anything, but something about that felt uh, like it sort of helped me out a little bit. Basically just made it himself. What a weird game. Like, we pretty much, I would say that we just got outplayed. Like, I just love White's position the entire time. I'm a positional player. Not only did he play it well, but just looked good. Like, I don't really, <laughs> I need some education on how to play the black perspective here because it's just looked like trash. The main thing I'm noticing is when I see knight f1, I see d5 right after it. This one, it looks like it's not. So g5, knight f1, and then here, g4. Now, I know the move was castle, but let's say g4. If knight h4, it's important to understand something. If knight h4, I th think we have knight takes e4. And I'm willing to say that I think while there's a knight here after g5, let's say that white plays a4 or something. Um, right now, I guess already the idea could be g4. And, and it's simply that the knight on h4 is just not good because of knight takes e4. So... That's something that I haven't really said out loud yet, but g5 actually kind of comes with a threat or at least an intention of g4. d4. We have the exact same rating. Only one of us can uh, prevail here. Okay, knight there. Let's go bishop f4. This is the main position for the whole opening. Bishop f5. Now in this position, the knight's on f6, so it's definitely e3. That I can remember. c6, and now we transpose to this line, which I'm learning is, uh, this is a very popular line. Very popular move order. h6, let's go bishop d3, not h5. Guard the bishop. Remember, we want to castle and go g5. That's the plan. Guarding the rook, and now that's the plan. Ooh, we haven't seen anybody take yet, but that doesn't seem like the right thing to do. So he can take down here on h1. Well, he has to. Can't do that, buddy. That's a free piece. That's a free pawn. Ouch. All your pieces are disappearing, buddy. Jeez, I tell you, straight out of the course. Straight out of the course. This is, uh, we've looked at this line many times now. Uh, I seem to be getting it almost every game. I don't know what the deal is, but I guess this is somehow just the most logical continuation. C6 to stop knight, um, knight b5 nonsense. And then here, they just play e6 like a normal London. Then in comes g4, h4. In comes g4, h4. Hmm. e4. All right, I'm, I'm coming at you with my e5. d4. Queen f6 we'll start with. We're in the scotch here. Bishop e3. All right. Sort of a main line for us. Bishop c4. 
95. Still the main line as far as I know. He's stopping d5, so he kind of knows what he's doing. But he goes here instead of e2. That's a little unusual for me. My instinct is like almost here in knight g4. Um, Bishop b3, just not the, not the move. We could probably just go here. Queen g6 feels like just kind of a good-looking all-around move. So he castles, taking this pawn in the center. That never feels like the, uh, the right answer. But d6, before we're castled, I just want to make sure that we're handling that move. Are we? I think we have bishop h3. It's such a strong threat that um, I think he needs to react to it. Okay, so he goes here. I guess the reason why I was uh, thinking that this was not that dangerous is knight g4 hits the bishop. I just think that's really tough to meet. He goes here to hit our queen. Um, admittedly, it's a little annoying. Knight takes here, takes here, takes on d1, takes on f7, check, and then rook takes back on d1. I can't really claim to be better there. Not with that pawn on, uh, not with that pawn there. Queen h5, bishop f4, also guards, um, guards that square. So a little bit annoying on that front as well. And if we go queen f6, then this is hanging. So maybe after f4, I hastily played this, but maybe queen takes e4 hitting the bishop was a super important intermezzo because I know that the position before that wasn't bad, so it must be that it just turned bad. So let's play this. Um, I think we're kind of forced into these lines now. Our queen is, I mean, h3 is happening, so. That's the plan, chess ninja, but it's not, it's not great, you know? It, this isn't great for, for black. Um, bishop f, or sorry, f4 looked like a mistake by my opponent, so I think that was why. Okay, bishop can come back. But we'll start to, oh, okay. Offer a trade. He shouldn't accept. He does. A bit lucky for me. Don't think that move was necessary. It's a good move. I probably have to do this. Now, king e7. Yeah, here there's rook e1, so we're not gonna, not gonna deal with that. Rookie one, we have knight f2. Easy to blunder uh, material here. My finest move. Ooh. A big mistake there. Let's play G five. I think this will uh, help me out. Might be able to get a trade here. Yeah, the thing is, if he doesn't trade, then he's kind of walking into this. Now this will be 
these will happen with check. We can take here, and that should make it a lot easier. Just make sure to keep the king in the box and uh, we'll be able to get the checkmate on the back rank there. PG to Moochie. Um, played really well. I think we caught ourselves in an IG4 move there. And this, this is just going to happen to me throughout this series, which is why, I mean, there's a huge difference between an opening I've played for 20 years <laughs> and an opening that I've played for 20 days. <laughs> so let's see. This is the scotch. Queen f6, bishop e3, bishop here, c3, bishop c4, and bishop b3. Only two lines here, but let's definitely take a look because we had a game that totally threw me off. I've only studied bishop e2. So let's have a look at it and <laughs> jump right into this. Okay, 95, bishop b3. Okay, so we do play bishop, or sorry, we do play queen g6. That's a good sign. Hey, here you go. There's a fun move, d5. Bishop h3 is happening. I was about to say, f4 is the move to test. So this is the exact same thing as the position we had on the board just a second ago, except the pawn's on d5 and not d6. So let's see what difference it makes. There we go, knight g4, knight d2, and queen d3. If bishop c1, queen g6, takes, castle, yeah, all the pieces are in play. Okay, we got d4 and d4 and knight f3. So I think what I'll do is I'll play e6 because I am anticipating that my opponent is going to be playing a London. Um, I'll start with c5. I'll play d5 and I'll play this line that I'm probably going to play most of the time I see the London this series, which is putting pawns like that. Bishop d6. And the idea after bishop there is to respond with queen c7, which is kind of an unorthodox move. Bishop b5 check is interesting. I'm just going to respond with this. I feel like bishop d7, though, if he takes, is like a real achievement for me. Um, I think this should be all right, though. Let's just play the knight and get castled, and the plan is e5. Okay, he goes knight e5. There's definitely pressure here. Let's get right out of it. And if he wants to play f4, the one thing that's different about this position is I have the e4 square. He doesn't have his knight on d2 yet. It's actually a big difference. Okay. Technically, knight takes might be a good move. Let's just play the simple... I mean, this is a London gone right, because again, anytime you play the London and you get to achieve this move, e5, you've equalized entirely, and it's probably even uh, slightly, slightly better. Slightly. So I, I just think there are zero issues now in the position. Should be totally fine. That e5 achievement is the whole point of us playing queen c7. Okay, might think, why don't I use this rook? But normally white doesn't really break with e4 in this line. He breaks with c4. So I want the rooks here and here, or just doubled on the d file. That should be enough. Um, I think we want to... 
have an escape squared there as well. I'm gonna go rook d6. This move happens, you know, we're ready to uh ready to unleash. Let's guard the pawn like that. And this. Definitely knight e4 here. Uh, feels like a natural move. And again, these lines are not for like, oh, we're much better. No, it's not like that. Um, I like the lines, but I don't feel like we have an overwhelming advantage. C4 might be happening. There's not really a lot in these positions. Almost want to. Almost want to play h5. I know I just played. Uh, I know I just played h6, but I almost want to play king g7, h5, h4. I'm evaluating that there's not a lot that either player can do here, except blunder a full rook. <laughs> so it's more of a slow game. I have the center. It's not much pressure that my opponent can add to the d-pawn. Um, he goes here. He's losing an entire queen. So <laughs> Well, his name is May the Fork Be With You. Indeed, sir. May it be. So not to take anything away from this guy, Captain Evans, he did play well, but I'm not going to give my opponent too, too much credit because, you know, the way the opening was played was not super accurately from, from the London. Black equalized easily and is probably slightly better. And then white just traded, you know, three pairs of pieces. So it's much harder to blunder when you don't have any pieces left to blunder. So despite having almost no pieces on the board and just, you know, pretty easy position to play, he still made the most significant blunder in the position. So, yeah, he did play well, but I'm not going to give him too much credit here. Because uh, that was a pretty pretty serious blunder in a uh, relatively simple position. Um, whereas my other opponents, like last couple games, they've been outplaying me with like all pieces on the board, straight up. So that, that those hit a little harder to me. But... For our London, what we're going to be doing to handle the uh, the London system is just bishop d6, queen c7, knight d7, not knight c6, so that our queen still protects our c-pawn and we don't have to deal with that. And we're trying to push e5 ASAP. So that's, our, that's how we're going to handle the London in this series. I don't have a chessable course for the London, but that's, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, bishop b5 check. Bishop d7 is a you know, great move here. I was expecting after bishop d7 that he might go here and say, okay, bishop is, you know, maybe kind of misplaced there. I don't know. But in retrospect, this is actually fine in view of maybe this. Because normally the knight's on d2 and the bishop's on f1. But now that he had to develop his bishop first, he's getting hit with e4, and perhaps it's kind of annoying. I still think that this is more to the point of what we're trying to do. He ended up playing uh, castling. Like, for example, I think the lines that we see here are, like, taking, and they're all, like, really equal. But black is achieving e5 in all these lines, so... I think it's a win for black. So this is a way to play the London and just not have to deal with all that 95 nonsense. For example, he played it, we castled, and yes, he could have played the move f4 and sort of cemented that knight there. This is normally like, oh, you know, quite uncomfortable, not what we want to deal with, but... We're able to get knight e4, and then next move, boot the knight out with f6 immediately so that we don't have to deal with it there. So 
yeah, we're just we're not putting up with the same issues that most people have to deal with in the London. Like usually the Bishop and Knight are here, White's castled. We don't have knight e4, but here we can just pop right in. So GG, and we're up to 1200 in our series. I personally have found uh, the game so far pretty entertaining and educational uh, because I've definitely been outplayed by some 1100s. We've had to reference the, the chessable book many, many times. I think that's the best way to learn the opening. Do the quick start guide so you learn the popular lines, the important moves, and the general feel for the opening. And then when you're playing your games, then just go back and reference it when you see when you play a new game. Be like, oh, okay, this is a new game. Let me check to make sure I played the opening right compared to the course. So if it is in the course, then you can make sure you played it right. If you played it wrong, then make sure to learn the, the moves that are different. I think it's uh I think it's a really easy thing to do. You made it to the end of yet another episode. I hope that this was really informative, letting you guys know how to study chess, how to improve at it, and how to use Chessable as a tool to help do so. At the end of the day, I think it's one of the best ways that you can learn openings, and I think that this series is a pretty good example of that. So if you liked those courses that I was working through, or if you wanted to pick up uh, different ones more specific to your repertoire, make sure to use chessable.com forward slash chess bra if you're going to upgrade to a pro membership. That's all for me, and we'll see you in the next episode.